Okay, everybody, let's try this example out. It's a long problem statement, I get that, but we'll go through it piece by piece together. So I have an air standard Stirling cycle. It has a maximum pressure of 600 PSI absolute and a minimum pressure of 16 PSI. Maximum volume of the air is 10 times the minimum volume. Okay, there we go. Good to know. We have a ratio. The temperature during the heat rejection process is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's just go ahead and make that into Rankine. So 560 Rankine. And I put an R right there, so don't forget. And how much heat is stored or recovered in the regenerator? So that's what I'm trying to find. What's the heat stored in the regenerator? And it gives us some properties. We have our specific gas constant. We have our specific heats. And we have you know, specific heats right there and our ratio of specific heats. We got it. So how are we going to do this? Randomly guess the answer. Okay, I know that's stupid. I'm sorry. I have to make some jokes. We're going to draw the cycle. Okay, we're going to draw the cycle like always. This is a Stirling cycle. So we have those two constant volume ones. But we're going to do the TS diagram, which we're just stealing, copying, and pasting from that previous slide. We have the 560 Rankine right here. We have some higher temperature right here, which I do not know what it is. I'll have to calculate that. We have heat going in, we have heat going out. So this is our cycle. Like I said before, it's good to have some sort of like dictionary if you want that shows you all the different cycles so you don't have to try to guess at these things or try to memorize them. Just make a little flip book and make it easier on yourself as you're going through this chapter, especially also chapter 11 too, where you're going to vapor cycles. Okay, now what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna start working our way through this going from one to two to three to four. So let's go ahead and find the pressure at state two. It's an isothermal process. We know the temperature stays constant. So it does help us out a little bit because PV over T is equal to PV over T for these heat addition or heat rejection processes. Temperature is constant. I get rid of those guys. It's just the P's and the V's. Another thing it told me was that the maximum volume of the air is 10 times the minimum volume. So I actually know what V1 and V2 are. It's one over 10. Now I don't know the exact values, I'm just saying I know what the ratio is. So I know my pressure at the end at P2, after this expansion process, is gonna be 60 PSI atmospheric. Okay, so we've got our pressure at P2. Now we're gonna find the temperature at state two. See, this is what we had to find the pressure. We found the pressure so we could then find the temperature. Now. For T2, what we're going to do is we don't know what T1 was. Let's see, did we? Yes. We don't know what T1 was, but we did know what T3 was. That was 560 Rankine. And so we're having to work our way back here to figure out what the temperature is right here. So once again, this is a constant volume process, and you're going to love this because we keep on bringing our ideal gas relations. So PV over T is equal to PV over T. In this case, these guys cancel, and I have a ratio of pressures and temperatures to get me what I need. So I know my pressure on the intake. I know my pressure at point two. Therefore, I have everything I need to be able to calculate this temperature. So now I know that this is 2100 Rankine up here. Okay, so we've got, let's see, we have T2, we have T3, we know T1, we know T4. This should be enough. So now let's go ahead and apply first law to process from two to three. So going from two to three, what's happening there? What's happening from two to three is our regeneration process. We have heat that is leaving and going somewhere. Where does it go? Squiggly lines as it goes over here. But the difference in enthalpy from two to three H3 minus H2 is equal to the amount of heat that I'm sending somewhere else in my system, okay? That is also equal to the enthalpy being added from four to one. So I'm stealing heat from this process after it got hot and putting that into this process right here. So I'm using it as efficiently as possible. Now, why do we use CV? Well, it's constant volume processes from two to three and from one to four, they were both constant volume. Since they're constant volume, we use CV instead of CP. So I plug those in and I get my regeneration, the heat that's stored by regenerator of 263.3 BTU per pound mass. Just remember, 
That's because what's going on from here to here, that is the regeneration point. That's where heat is being stolen there. Regen stolen. And then from here to here, the regen is added in. And we've got it. I believe that's everything for this one. Yes. So thank you all so much. And I'll see you all next time as we go into yet another cycle. Have a good one. Bye-bye.